were different. The de Jesus cast out demons and spirits. My understanding of what he cast out of people were breakaways of the of the foundation of the root person. We, everyone has a root personality. We have a spiritual root inside of us. We have a root personality, okay? And we have the primordial king. We have we are spirit, and we are soul. So our spirit is the primordial king. Okay. If we're born, every man born of a woman has a, the primordial king called Satan and the devil. Okay. And that we've been teaching here. That's a Kabbalistic principle of primordial kings. If you haven't heard me, uh, you have to go looking for my old messages. Not all my, my, not my old messages of just the last few weeks and months. We've been talking about those primordial kings. Okay. And how they came to be in humanity and how they fell and how they became Satan and the devil in every human being born of a woman. Okay. So we have a root person, a root, a spiritual root, and then we have a personality and they're intertwined with each other. Okay. And they affect each other. Okay. And uh, the personality is female and the spirit, which is the primordial king, is male to the, fe to the female personality. So a demon uh, is in, is in um, well, let me say it another way. So the spirit, which is stronger, Okay, then, the soul, then the soul, okay, uh, wants to, for, what, for whatever reason, based on family line curses or whatever reason, wants to express itself out, so, out, wants to express itself outside of the human being. Now, if you remember the teaching on primordial kings, those primordial kings started out on the inside of Adam and Kimmel, but they wanted to express themselves outside. They wanted to come outside of Adam and Kimmel. And that was the, the beginning of the world of points, which was the beginning of the journey to the materialization of a visible creation. Mm -hmm. the, the, those primordial kings traveled through spiritual worlds. Yeah. And the, the ultimate spiritual world, as I understand it today, the farthest spiritual, the world, mm -hmm. spiritual world that's farthest away from the root is this world. Jesus called it outer darkness. So, these primordial kings, they're not creative. There's nothing new under the sun. Everything that we see out here can be traced back to the primordial activities of the original creation. So we see these primordial kings that are cut off from the highest spiritual worlds, and they're inside of us, and they want to come out, just like the primordial kings wanted to come out. See? So how do they come out? Okay. They cause the, the personality of the body that they're intertwined with to desire one of their characteristics outside of themselves. So we have, it's, it's very complicated at this point because each generation has you come into this world with curses and blessings depending on your family before you and who, who the soul was before you. It's, it's very complicated, but we come into this world with a sin nature, so let's leave it at that. And some aspect of this of a person's sin nature that desires to express itself. Why would it desire to express itself? Well, maybe it's stimulated. Maybe you're a young child and, and you found your father's or your mother's pornography in a drawer and it, it touched you, it touched something, it touched sin deep inside of you. Yeah. And that that and it, it activated it, it came alive. That aspect of the primordial king came alive and wanted to experience this world. Yeah. So the way it experiences this world is by causing the personality to desire the image of itself in this world, which is pornography. So now you have an unclean spirit in the midst of you, okay? and pornography in your eyes view, and there's a loop going on, you see, of satisfaction. And the person that feels satisfied is actually feeling the satisfaction of the primordial king, if you can believe that. That's why the solution to the problem is the casting out of the king, okay? Which is a day called the demon in the, in the scripture, because the whole source of your satisfaction was not really your, was not really your, your source, it was not really you, it was the demon inside of you. And brethren, that is true of every area 
of our lives. It's about the, the men and the women that you're attracted to concerning marriage. You need, to, you need to understand this, brethren, especially if you are in God, to consider someone for marriage that the Lord Jesus Christ has not approved of is a disaster waiting to happen because if he doesn't approve of it, that means that that person, not that it's a bad person, okay, but that that person is not the image or the reflection of Christ Jesus in the midst of you. It's that that woman or that man is the image or the projection of another king inside of you. That means if you marry that woman or that man, okay, you're not marrying the image of Christ Jesus. Which will, which will prove to be a division between you and Christ Jesus because the marriage that is vertical has to flow into the marriage that is spiritual, that is, that is physical. You're married to Christ Jesus. He projects his desire or his attraction to a mate, which is what? A mate that is interested in God and the things of God. That's who you'll be interested to. Not necessarily her beauty or her, her, her stature or her money or her father can help you in business or what, whatever it might be. So the woman or the man you're attracted to, if God doesn't approve of him or her, okay, your marriage is starting out not on a good foot and it has to hinder your relationship with him. Because we have a spiritual marriage that's vertical and a horizontal marriage that's supposed to be the image of the expression of the vertical image. I don't know if I made it clear what a demon is. It's it's a a root. It's a it's a root in your sin nature that rises up with a desire to express itself. And you could be born with it because of a family line curse, or it could be stimulated in you. But, you know, brethren, I, I I I every day I hope that I'm wrong. That I see people are very naive today in a way that they have not been naive in the past. I know that the population has been dumbed down educationally, but I see them very, very naive in, in, in societal ways. It, it, it was known, brethren, in society. You don't need a PhD. You don't even need to go to college. You don't even need to go to high school. These things, spiritual things that affect society, were known by illiterate people. 